Hello friends, welcome to the world of English literature. My name is Amit and today I have with me Dr. Asher Jesudos to, hi. Hi, to discuss the adventure by Jayant Narlikar which is from your textbook Hornbill for class 11. All right, thank you Amit for the introduction and we will we'll wait for you to begin. Sure. So this is a wonderful story um, under the rubric of science fiction written by Jayant Nadlikar, who is a professor of astrophysics who has done some amazing work and is a recipient of Padm Bhushan, Padm Vibhushan and is also a science fiction writer. Isn't that amazing? So let us discuss this story. Let us first go through the summary and I also want to tell you that the version that is um, in your book is an abridged version and you need to read the longer version. So let us begin with the summary of this story and like I said this is a detailed summary of the longer version of the story. Professor Gangadhar Pant Gaitonde collided with a truck and disappeared. So Professor Gaitonde was an eminent historian and a leading public figure of Pune. He was much in demand for presiding over public functions and he had presided over not less than 999 functions. So obviously he was looking forward to his thousandth. And if you are thinking that how can one participate uh, in 999 conferences, uh, the writer has also given you a calculation. One public meeting once a week will take 20 years to make it 999. And so Professor Guy Thonde was 55 years old. Having started in his early 30s as a public orator in Pune, he had a good 20 years. So he was hesitant and choosy at first, but then he began to relish his job. He loved speaking at his um, gatherings. So he would go to anything. He would go to book release, felicitations, jubilee programs. Um, and he started speaking on subjects other than history as well. So in a way here, Jayant Narlikar is making fun of this character who is addicted to speaking, who is addicted to public attention. And so it is a dig at people who seek attention. This is also one of the points that we will discuss later. So we see that Professor Guy Thonde is waiting for his thousand seminar. And since his home subject is history, he wanted to talk about history in his thousand seminar, which would be about the battle of Panipat, the third battle. However, the 999th talk was in Pune University on the catastrophe theory, which is obviously related to maths and physics. The maths professor refused and nominated Professor Guy Tonde in jest, just for fun to see if a historian could speak about physics. Now, Professor Guy Tonde was curious about the topic. All right, so Rajendra Deshpande was a research fellow, a PhD scholar. Um, he was uh, in Pune University and uh, Professor Gaitonde was curious about this, this whole catastrophe theory, right? And he wanted to know a little bit more about the catastrophe theory. So he went to Rajendra Deshpande and he said, what is this catastrophe theory? Tell me a little bit more about this, right? And so he says, uh, you know, have you heard of Newton's laws of motion? And Gaitonde says, of course, I've heard of Newton's laws of motion. I mean, but tell me more. And he says, well, Newton's laws of motion work really well when, you know, things are in a linear motion where the forces are not varying constantly, right? And um, so, so Gaitonde says, okay, okay, tell me a little bit more. And he says the catastrophe theory actually happens when there are more chaotic elements that come in, right? So he gives the example of two dogs fighting. What happens when two dogs fight with each other? They're both aggressive. They're both attacking each other. Suddenly, one decides that, okay, I've had enough, I'm going to run away, right? Why does that happen? Or uh, a cricket team suddenly collapses, you know, someone is batting really well, that person gets out and suddenly the entire team collapses. Or uh, mob riots take place, you know, what incites it? How do the mobs go from one place to another? Uh, what causes or triggers these events? What happens with share prices? So all, all of these things are applications that he talks about. Uh, when it comes to the catastrophe theory, right? And he also says, oh, what happens in battles, by the way? You know, who wins battles and what happens that causes this? And the moment he says battles, Gaitonde is again interested because he's a historian, right? So when he says that, uh, he's really interested and he says, okay, you know what? I'm going to take this lecture up. 
I want to become, uh, you know, I want to be at this uh, function. And Rajendra gives him some books and uh, Gaitonde is very excited. Professor Gaitonde is very excited and he takes the books and he's on his way home. And on his way home, he thinks about the Battle of Panipat and he's trying to connect it with, the, with this whole catastrophe theory. And uh, he thinks, what if, you know, something had changed? And he was thinking about this when a truck came and hit his car. And, uh, you know, obviously, uh, when a truck hits a car, there's going to be a lot of calamity. And the driver of the truck before hitting the car realized, you know, he saw Gaitonde in the car. And he knew from his Jodhpuris that he was wearing that he was a well-to-do person, right? So he got out of the truck and he looked for him, but he couldn't find him anywhere because Gaitonde had disappeared. Sixty hours later, so that's where the, the story s skips, right? We don't know what happened in between at this point, but 60 hours later, uh, Professor Gaitonde appears with torn clothes and an empty pocket, right? And in the middle of Azad Maidan in Bombay. So how did he move from Pune to Bombay? We don't know. And what happened in between? No one knows. And a constable comes in because obviously crowds gathered that, you know, a man is lying in the middle of Azad Maidan. And a constable comes in and he's curious and, you know, he's trying to find out who this person is, but there are no documents, nothing to identify the person. But one person from the crowd recognizes him and he tells the constable who he is, right? And then uh, a few things happen and eventually uh, Professor Gaitonde regains consciousness and he says, well, I don't know how I've come here, but I know that my son stays in Mumbai, in Bombay, because it was called Bombay at that time when the story was uh, being narrated. So Vinay Gaitonde, his son, he comes in. Uh, so by that time, they've taken him to the police station. So Vinay Gaitonde comes in and uh, he, uh, you know, takes him home. He insists that, you know, uh, he should stay with him for a few days. However, uh, Professor Gaitonde, you know, is very curious because he needs to understand what is happening. How did he reach Bombay? So he decides to go to Pune immediately, right? So he gets on board the Deccan Queen and he's on the way back. And on the way in the train, he reaches out. I mean, there's a, there's a station that comes in and, you know, he's trying to buy some something from the station. And he pulls out from his pocket um, a, a piece of paper. And this piece of paper actually refreshes his memory, right? And as soon as his memory comes back, he decides that he has to go back to Rajendra and uh, speak to him. So there are two things that he decides that, you know, I have to go speak to Rajendra immediately. And the second thing that he talks about is that he will never sit as the chair of an event again. So why this happens, what was in that document, and all of this is something that Amit will tell us a little bit more about. So what happens after the accident? Kaitonde wakes up in a hospital after the accident. And then a discussion ensues on about the landmarks. And the doctor and Gaitonde do not recognize many of each other's landmarks. Meaning what Gaitonde says should be in, in the city is not in the city. What the doctor says should be in the city is not in the city for Gaitonde. So something is wrong here of how they perceive the city, how they have known the city. Some have moved from Pune to Bombay, some of these landmarks. It's quite weird what is happening over here. The doctor thinks it's because of trauma, because Professor Guy Tonde has had an accident um, and so he's probably lost his memory, his mind is acting up and even the history of Mughals in the Peshwas has changed now. This is a little too much that uh, the nitty gritties of mainstream history, what we read in history books has also changed. So this is where the story is getting us into the thick of science fiction, um, which is not projected into the future but into the past, that the past seems to have happened differently, which is what um, the story will try to figure out as we go along. So the year is same in Pune, but is different in Mumbai. Um, the doctor says, today is Ashad Shukl Chaturdashi, um, Saka era, 1908. If you need the date in Bombay, it is July 20, 1986. So the doctor discharges Professor Guy Thonde next day and offers to drop him home. Now this hospital that Guy Thonde is in was more modern than what he knows um, is generally the trend in India. And the signs were in English, Marathi and Hindustani. The car model that the doctor was driving is different too. So Gaitonde is feeling completely lost because everything as he knows um, in Pune and Bombay is different from what he's seeing around him. A more modern space, different car model, different landmarks that they know. 
Um, so it seemed to him that he didn't know the place at all. And so he asks to be dropped to the train station. But the doctor drives him around Pune first. Um, also, the doctor asks him what he does and he says he writes history books, he's a historian. Um, and the doctor says that he's not a great fan of um, history because history was a boring subject that they had to read in school. And by the way, he also mentions Guy Thonde's book. And he asks if Professor Guy Thonde and the historian Guy Thonde, whose book um, he has read, are related. And Guy Thonde, baffled that this guy does not like history at all, denies any connection um, with himself in a way. Right. So after Guy Thonde denies the connection, what happens is that the doctor says, OK, let me go drop you home. Uh, he tells him his address. Uh, but what happens is when they're driving across Pune, they realize that several of their addresses don't match. Like uh, Guy Thonde just does not realize what is happening because he doesn't recognize any of the landmarks. So uh, finally, however, they realize that Shaniwar Wada is one place that still exists. So he was very happy, uh, Professor Guy Thonde, that at least some landmark is there, which is common. And he realizes that the Peshwa's palace is still intact. And he, wa he wanted to go and take a look at it because in his imagination as a history professor, he had imagined how it would be, but you know, it was never there for him to look at. But in this world, the palace was still intact. However, uh, the place was shut. It was uh, only open for a few hours in the evening, and he could, so he couldn't go in. So he says, okay, let me go there in the morning. So, so he asks, uh, he, he gets back in the car with the doctor, and the doctor is still very amused that there is this person, because the doctor doesn't, has not been to this other world that Professor Guy Thonde has come from, right? Uh, so the doctor is very amused that this person doesn't even remember so many things about the, the, the very city that he lives in, right? So he thinks that he's going through some post-traumatic stress or something like that. So he gets, gets back into the car and, uh, you know, the doctor kind of feels that what's wrong with this person, you know, maybe he's going through some trauma and that's why he doesn't remember the very city that he does not live in and he, he's naming parts in Mumbai that he knows are in Pune and so on. But suddenly, Guy Thonde, somehow in all this confusion, gets his confidence back and he remembers that his son works in Bombay, right? So he says, you know what, just drop me to the train station and I will catch, and the doctor says, yeah, you'll be in time to catch the Jija Mata Express, which doesn't exist in the real world. Uh, but Guy, Professor Guy Thonde says, yes, let's, let's do that, right? So he takes out some notes from his pocket, but uh, the doctor takes a look and laughs again. And he says, uh, you know what, these notes may be good for m playing Monopoly, but these don't work here. So I'll give you some actual notes. He gives him some 10 rupee notes. And Professor Guy Thonde thankfully takes that and he goes inside the train where he realizes that he needs a pass. He needs a pass to get into Bombay. And he's very surprised that why do I need to get a pass to get into Bombay? Like a permit, a proper permit, right? Um, and then he realizes that Bombay, in this world that he is in, is a part of the British Raj, even now in present day India, right? Uh, so he's very confused, but anyway, he goes into the station, he realizes that everything around him is very modern compared to the world that he's coming from. So there's a Polaroid uh, uh, camera, like a camera which takes photographs, and you know, see, someone took his photograph and printed it out for him immediately. Uh, and this we're talking about 1986, so that was a, you know, a, a rarity at that point of time. So he catches, within 10 minutes he's got the permit and then he's boarding the train and he realizes that even the interiors of the train are much better than the, than the train, the Deccan Express that he's usually, he usually takes between uh, Bombay and Pune, right? And it was much faster too. And then he takes a look at the newspaper and it confirms the date that it was July 21, 1986. And then he meets uh, Khan Sahib, right? Uh, so he realizes there are some uh, uh, Britishers who are sitting next to him and Khan Sahib uh, who's sitting next to him. And Khan Sahib basically starts talking to him and he asks Khan Sahib, where, where are you going? And he says, I'm going to Peshawar. And Ga Professor Guy Thonde is very surprised and he says, uh, how long does it take to get a permit to go to Peshawar? And Khan Sahib is very surprised and he says, why will I need a permit to go to my own country? Right, uh, Peshawar is a part of India. You need a permit to go to Bombay because it is a part of the British province, but Peshawar is a part of India. So you don't need a permit. Uh, Guy Thonde is still very surprised and he says, how long will it take you and how will you go there? He says, I'll go to Delhi and then Lahore and then Peshawar. It will take me three days to go there. And then, uh, you know, so while this conversation happens, uh, they've entered Bombay. Uh, 
uh, and he sees this sign which says Greater Bombay Metropolitan Railway uh, and, and each of these, uh, the windows of this railway uh, have the Union Jack, the British flag on them to, as a reminder that it's a, it's a part of the British province, right? Uh, and then he also sees a sign which, which confirms that the East India Company is also still functional in this alternate reality. And the landmarks of Bombay were very different. And well, he reaches, somehow reaches the son's address, his son's address, but then he finds out that his son does not live there anymore. But by now, he's so used to all these things that he's not even surprised anymore. All right, so then what he does is he goes, he decides to have a quick lunch. Uh, and then he decides to go to a library because he feels that Whatever information uh, has changed, whatever information has changed in the last uh, several years because of which, you know, all these landmarks have changed, uh, must be documented in some history book in a library, right? So he decides to go to a library as soon as he can and he finds one at the Asiatic Society. And what he reads in that library is something that Dr. Amit Ranjan will tell us now. So, interestingly, history was the same until the third battle of Panipat which is after which things have changed. So what we have seen in the lesson here is there's an alternate reality in which Professor Guy Tonde has landed. So he wants to know from where this bifurcation has happened. So the bifurcation has happened in time, in history, at the third battle of Panipat. And so he goes and reads his own book written by Professor Guy Tonde, but the details were different. So the Professor Guy Tonde after the accident in Pune is reading a different book written by himself from a different reality. So there are two Professor Guy Tondes living in two alternate realities. So what has happened in this alternate reality? Ahmad Shah Abdali was chased back to Kabul. So in the real battle, Ahmad Shah Abdali defeated the Marathas um, and that's how the Maratha power was diminished. The Maratha army was led by Sadashiv Rao Bhau and his younger nephew Vishwa Rao Peshwa. For political reasons, the Peshwas kept the puppet regime, Mughal regime alive in Delhi. Now we all know from the history we have read that the Peshwas lost the third battle of Panipat, that Bahadur Shah Zafar was the figurehead. He was the figurehead of various principalities, various little kingdoms in India who got together in the revolt of 1857. But in this alternate reality, the Peshwas are the rulers of India and they have kept the Mughal regime alive in Delhi just as a figurehead. And they have also recognized the dawning of science and set up their own centers for science and technology. And so, um, India is very developed technologically in this alternate universe. The Peshwas were gradually replaced by democratic bodies as it happened across the world that democracy sprung up. So the Maratha power also gave rise to democracy in India. The Shahanshah, the Mughal um, emperor, was just a figurehead in this system. Like the queen is in England, even though they have a democracy, the queen is the figurehead, she's a rubber stamp. Gangadhar really likes um, what he sees in this alternate reality. The British had been allowed to keep Bombay um, for commercial reasons, very much like the British had Hong Kong. Now for 99 years, which has recently gone to China. So in this alternate reality, the Marathas are the rulers, it gradually becomes a democracy, but Bombay, like Hong Kong, is with the British, still not integrated with the Indian Union. Gangadhar is very perturbed and he wants the details of the battle. Um, and he found, finds it in Bhau Sahib and Chi Bakar. Um, and a quote from here, and then Vishwarao guided his horse to the melee where the elite troops were fighting and he attacked. And God was merciful, a shot brushed past his ear. Even the difference of a till, a CCM seed, would have led to his death. So what we know from history is that Vishwas Rao was shot and that is how the Marathas uh, lost the war. If he was not shot dead, if the bullet had grazed past his head by an inch, uh, history would have been different and this is the alternate history that this lesson is, the story is showing us. The Marathas won because Bhau Sahib survived. The library, so this is all happening at the library that he's reading about this alternate history. The library closed at 8 and Gangadhar requested for the books to be kept aside 
so he could return at 8 a.m. the next day. Um, Asher will take us through um, the subsequent events. Right. Thanks, Amit. So what happens is that uh, he leaves the library and he wants to come back the next morning. And he asks at what time will the library, library open and the, the librarian says 8 a.m. And he asks for his books to be kept, kept aside so he can come back and read them. And the librarian is very happy that finally there's someone who's interested in the books, you know, um, as much as Professor Guy Tonde was. So he leaves, he leaves that library, he goes out and he reaches Azad Maidan. Now, if you realize, uh, if you realize, uh, if you remember at the earlier part of the story, he wake, that's where he wakes up with torn clothes. So now we find out what actually happened over there and how he ended up with torn clothes. So when he went there, there was a speech that was going on. And he notices, uh, I mean, he noticed at that point that the chair, there's a chair on the podium and the chair is empty. So there's a speech happening, but the chair is empty. And usually, if you if you remember at the beginning, he had done 999 uh, lectures. I mean, in the sense that he was the chairperson at 999 functions. And if you remember at the beginning of the story, uh, Professor Gaitoni was known for his functions and the chair and talking at events, and that's what he loved doing. And when he saw that empty chair, it was like a magnet getting attracted to a piece of iron, right? So he ran to that chair, he climbed onto it, and he sat on it. And the crowd got really angry. They got angry, they started shouting, they said, get off that chair, get off that chair. And Professor Gaitonde then gives them some quotes about Shakespeare, and then he says, you know, an empty chair should not be left empty. And, you know, he says a lot of things, but the crowd basically said that, you know, in that world, in that reality, they had abolished that custom of someone being on the chair years ago, and they wanted that chair to be empty. And when Professor Gaitonde refused to get off that chair, they started throwing tomatoes at him, they started throwing eggs and other objects at him. And finally, when he wasn't moving, they physically came to the, to the, to the stage and they pulled him off and they ejected him from, from the stage physically, right? And that is where Professor Gangadhar Gaitonde disappeared from that alternate reality, right? Um, and then he comes back, that's where, now earlier in the story we found that, you know, he was found uh, in the middle of Azad uh, Maidan uh, with his torn clothes and all of that and he's on the way back to, uh, to Pune to meet Rajendra, right? Uh, and now when he narrates this whole thing to Rajendra, he's back in Pune and he narrates this whole thing, Rajendra thinks that, okay, I think you've either been dreaming or you've been imagining. But Professor Gaitonde says, you know what, I know that you would, I, I knew that this is what you would say, but here is some proof. So what happened was that while he left the left the library, he got the the uh, the book that he was reading, the the Bakar, right? It was in his in his uh, pocket, but somehow that book got lost in Azad Maidan. However, one page from that book got stuck in his pocket, remained in his pocket, and it travelled back to the real world. And he showed that he showed that to Rajendra, and Rajendra read that entire account of what happened in the third battle of Panipat. And he was amazed that, okay, suddenly from smiling and laughing, he moved to a serious tone because suddenly he realizes, oh my God, this is something which is related to the catastrophe theory that we were talking about in the 999th function of Professor Gai Tonde. And he says, this is probably what has happened, uh, right? And he relates, so he says that, he explains the battle of uh, Panipat, you know, all those things that are changing, like that little arrow which instead of, uh, sorry, the, the little shot that instead of hitting uh, the Peshwa, misses it, misses him very gradually, and that changes the outcome of the entire battle. That is what the catastrophe theory is all about. And uh, then Professor Gayatonde says, but what about my moving to that reality? How did I end up there? You know, in a, in a completely different world. What was that world all about? And then uh, Rajendra uh, talks about the quantum theory, and he says that, you know, the same thing happens in quantum physics where the position of an electron in motion is impossible to determine. And the analogy that he gives is, you know, if you fire a, a shot from a gun, you can actually physically, in, I mean, using physics, you can figure out, you know, in the next 20 seconds, where will that bullet be? What trajectory will it be following? You know, based on gravity, based on the velocity, etc. But you cannot do this at the subatomic level. You cannot determine where exactly an electron is going to be. So Professor Gayatonde says, is it like the planets revolving around the sun? Uh, Rajendra says, no, it's not like the planets revolving around the sun because you can predict the motion of a planet, but you cannot predict the trajectory of an electron, right? 
so the odds the best thing that you can do is determine the odds you can figure out maybe the electron will be here the chances of the electron being here are so high and that this this lack of determinism is what is at the core of quantum uh, quantum physics or, or, the, or the entire quantum theory right so once he's done explaining this quantum theory to uh, professor gaitonde he says but why did i mean i understand all of this but how did i end up there why did i go there and rajendra says i really don't know but the best explanation is maybe you were thinking about the battle of panipat and the neurons in your brain were aligned in such a way that maybe it triggered the right kind of reaction and you ended up in this alternate universe and there are many mysteries of the world that we don't know and this is one such mystery that we'll never be able to figure out and rajendra says that you know now for his 1000th uh, lecture on the battle of panipat he doesn't really have to figure out what if because he's actually experienced that in real life however professor gaitonde clearly says that he had taken two decisions on that train one was to come and talk to rajendra and the second thing was that he will not be attending the 1000th function because after having been thrown off the chair in that alternate reality he has decided that he will never ever chair another function in his entire life and he's already communicated that to the organizers of the panipat seminar right and that is the story uh now we will move on to uh, now that we're done with the summary we'll move on to some themes that we can find in the story and amit is going to tell us a little bit more about these themes so what a fascinating story asher Uh, I, of, think, I think I uh, think alternate yeah. reality parallel universes um and so in the next um, episode we are going to discuss um, the themes about parallel universe parallel realities what science fiction is and right. many such issues um thanks a lot viewers uh, for being with us thanks a lot asha and see you very soon in the second episode thanks thank everyone you. thank you thank you amit for having me over thank you thanks.